I'm here to guide you through the checklist for Wednesday, April what, 8th. And first of all, today our exciting learning adventure is World Hello Day. I like saying hello in all kinds of languages. I have here my globe ball. Woo! And I think it's interesting on this ball to just learn how to say hello in lots of different languages. This is our country, of course, the United States of America. And remember, we're in the continent of North America. This whole big chunk right here is North America. Um, so, most of us speak English. We say hello. Well, down here below us in Mexico, the main language is Spanish. They say hola. South America, a lot of people speak Spanish or languages related to Spanish, like Portuguese. Many of them also say hola. Um, there's people who say bonjour. There's people who say uh, dos vidanya. Actually, that's goodbye, but <laughs> there's people who say salam malakam. All over the world, they say different things to say hello because we all speak different languages. And it's so interesting to learn how to say hello in different languages. I can say hello in about a hundred different languages. And I think it would be fun for you today to learn how to say hello in five or six different languages, however many you can learn. So let's see um, see how many different languages you can learn to say hello in by the end of the day, okay? It'll be a lot of fun. And uh, let me tell you my favorite way to say hello before we get into math. My favorite way to say hello is comes from the Marshall Islands. In Marshall Ease, to say hello, you say yokwe. You try saying it. Yokwe, yokwe. And I like that because it reminds me of like the yolk of an egg, the yellow part of the egg. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. And I just think it's really cool. Yokwe. I knew a, I knew a guy from the Marshall Islands once. Um, and so, yeah, I just think it's really fun to learn how to talk even a little bit, to say hello in different languages. And I hope that you can learn how to say hello in lots of different languages today. And so on our math worksheet, to help tie in our world hello day, I have a little stick figure saying hola, which is, of course, like I said, how you say hello in Spanish and some other languages. And let me tell you about our math worksheet for today. First of all, we're learning, remember, right now about 3D shapes. So I've got three 3D shapes here to juggle for you. Ah, up there. I'm going to crack my computer screen. Just kidding. Ta-da! All right. I wish that I could do a whole juggling show of 3D shapes for you. I would, I would love to do that if we were in person. I could do all kinds of fun tricks for you, but hopefully some other time. The thing we get to learn today about 3D shapes, there's three words, face, edge, and vertice. Uh, the face... Um, a face is the flat part of a 3D shape. Face, 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 face. A dice or a cube shape has six faces. We know that real easy because on a dice, there's six sides if you've spent much time playing games with dice. But the flat part is called the face. <coughs> the edge is right here. Think of like where you would almost cut yourself, like the edge of a knife. It's called the edge. I'm trying to figure out the best way to show it in the camera. Edge. 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 Those are edges. So we have the face, the edge. Now the last word is vertice. <clears throat> Let me talk about this word for a second because it's kind of tricky. If we have a ball... It's like this, of course, but if we have more than one, we say balls. Remember, when we add that S, it's called plural. It means more than one. But there's some words like the word goose. We have one goose, but if we're going to have more than one, we do not say gooses. That gooses is not a word. The whole thing gets changed to geese. Well, the word vertice is kind of like that. If there's one, it's actually called a vertex. If there's more than one, we use the word 
vertices. Okay? Now, so vertex means one. Vertices is more than one. Now, let me tell you what it actually is. It's another word for corner. When two edges meet, the corner is called a vertex. If we count up all the corners, we're counting up the vertices. Okay? I'm going to use this shape as an example. If I asked you how many faces does it have, you would count these. This has one, two, three, four, five. This shape, it's called a pyramid, has five faces. If we wanted to count up the uh, edges, we would count, remember, the parts that, that are like this, almost like they can cut you. One, two, three, four. Now we got to do the bottom. Five, six, seven, eight. There are eight edges on the pyramid. What if I ask you how many vertices? One, two, three, four, five vertices or corners. Remember where those edges meet? It's called a vertice. It's called a vertex. More than one is called vertices. So this one has corner, 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 point, has five vertices. Uh, vertex, 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 vertex. There's five of them, five vertices. Let's do it again with this shape. If I asked you how many faces, it has one, two, three. I'm holding it upside down. <laughs> now you can read. It's called a triangular prism. Um, let's start over counting the faces. Sorry about that. I, I get distracted easy, don't I? Do you guys get distracted that easy? I hope not. I hope that I get distracted more than you because I kind of go, do, do, do. I'm all over the place sometimes in these videos, huh? Okay, back to this. <laughs> Here we go. Let's count the faces for reals this time. One, two, three, four, five. A triangular prism has five faces. Now let's count the um, edges. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine edges on this. Now let's count the vertices. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six vertices. Remember, each of these points is a vertex. There's six vertices. All right. The reason, so you only have to do uh, six blanks. Only two questions, which is six blanks on today's worksheet. So it should be easy for you. Just some practice with face, edge, and vertice. If you forget which word is which, the picture is up here to remind you what the face is, what the edge is, and what the vertice is. You're going to have to imagine this shape. Count up how many faces, write it right here. Count up how many edges, write it right here. Count up how many vertices this has, write it right here. Maybe in your house you actually could find a rectangular prism or a, a cube, and then it would be easier to count. Um, you also might want to try it just for fun with some other shapes that aren't these two shapes that your questions are. So if you want to try some other shapes just for fun, that's a great idea too. Remember, face is the flat part, edge is this thing, the vertice is where the edges come together to make a corner or a point. All right, um, pause the video now and go get your... Well, first of all, remember, it's World Hello Day. So I've drawn you a nice hello, hola picture right here. So make sure you pause the video. Make sure you read that little picture. And remember, hola is hello in Spanish. But pause the video and go get your math done now.
hit my eye. Okay, you sh you should be back now from uh, you should be back now and back from doing your math. Let's see what's next on our worksheet. Spelling. You already know about this week's spelling. The main reminder I'm going to give you is very v e r y only o n l y. Um, I also want to remind you that many of the words you have to make sure you put two letters in the middle so it will say it's short vowel sound. Sunny, we want it to say uh, then we put two ends. Uh, penny, we want it to say eh, uh, we put two ends. Puppy, we want it to say uh, so we put two p's. If you wanted the short vowel sound, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, you have to separate the vowels with two of those consonants in the middle, right? So make sure you do that when you're spelling these words. Also remember, Y at the end of a longer word, two syllables or more, says E. So a two syllable word or longer, if it's going to say E at the end, it's usually going to be a Y that we write. Puppy, funny, sadly, grumpy. They all end with Y, even though it sounds like E. Do not write an E at the end, write Y at the end. Okay, pause the video, and I've got a nice uh, world hello poster on the corner of it for you. Hello, bonjour, hola, and some other languages that don't even use the same letters as us. So take a look at that for fun while you are writing your tracing the spelling words. Pause the video now and trace your spelling words. Okay, you should be back from tracing your spelling, and uh, it's time for writing. For writing today, hopefully you haven't sent your letter off yet, because the letter you wrote yesterday, I want you to take a look at it. Did you start with capital letters? Now, when you're writing a letter, dear is capitalized, the very first. Then the person's name is capitalized. Then you put a comma and go to the next line, then that's where you're actually starting your sentences, so it also is capitalized. Lots of interesting capitalization in letters, so make sure you capitalize the right spots and maybe have your parents help check you too. Check and see, did you use sentences? Did you put periods in? Did you start with capital letters? Um, did you use nice handwriting? When you're just making up a story, it's not as big of a deal. But when you are writing for someone else to read it, like a letter you're writing to that person, you need to write neatly so that they can read it and and they can feel appreciated like you really put in a, um, some time to connect with them because you did your best on it. So please, if you, didn't, if you use sloppy writing, you, I would recommend you go back and fix that and write nicer. Um, just spend some time right now. You might think, how can I make put some more interesting words in here. So go back and check your writing. Your parents can help you. One of the very most important writing skills, remember, is revising and editing. Being able to go back and check your work, figure out, find mistakes that you've made, and figure out ways that you can just make it more interesting. So go back into your letter and look for ways to make it better, and then send it off. Uh, depending on who you wrote to, you can uh, send it in the mail to them. Maybe you could just take a picture and text. Your parents can text it to them. But send the letter because it, it's always nice to get a fun letter from someone, from a friend or a family member. Um, pause the video now and go to your writing, your letter from yesterday and make it the best you can and send it off. Okay, pause the video now to do writing. Okay, you should be back from writing. I have a question for you. I've got my nice little globe beach ball. What do you think will happen if I go like this? Just kidding. I'm not going to do that. I like this beach ball. Just a random, random thing to help you not be bored for a minute. Okay. You should be done with math, spelling, and writing. It's time for recess. So pause the video. Um, play inside for a few minutes. Go play outside for a few minutes. About 10 minutes. Make sure it's okay with your parents and... Uh, have a 10-minute recess break, then come back and we'll, we'll continue. Pause the video for recess. Okay, you should be back from recess now, ready to do reading. Today's reading is uh, 
there's this story called The Language of India. Now, one reason I chose this story is because there are a lot of tricky words in it, but it's okay for you to have to read tricky things. Also, I want you to practice reading smoothly. So time yourself for one minute and see how far you can get. Then after you're done, you're going to just finish reading the whole thing. And on the back, there's some questions, just three questions to answer. So practice reading smooth. See how fast you can go, nice and smooth. Time yourself for one minute. And then when you're done, you can stop the timer and just finish reading it, then answer the questions. We're practicing two things. One, reading smoothly, which the easiest way to measure that is how quick can you read. It's not the only thing to do with smoothness, but it just helps measure it. So how you want to read smoothly and quickly. Second thing, comprehension. Are you understanding what you read? If you don't know the answer to a question, go back in the story and find the answer. That's part of being a great reader is being able, being willing to go back and look for the answer. So you may have to read it twice to find the answers to the questions. That's just fine. The, now, when you're reading this, there's going to be a lot of tricky words. So let's talk for a minute. The reason that makes them so tricky is they are um, a lot of countries. There's a lot of other languages and countries. Now, in India, they don't even use the same alphabet as us. Isn't that interesting? Look at that. This is how they write in India. They do not even use the same letters as us. It's so interesting. Um, in some countries, most people, well, I don't want to read out all for you. You're supposed to show me how fast you read. Let me just find some of the trickiest words. Countries, language, uh, France is a country across the ocean in Europe. Um, Again, languages. Spain is a country where the language Spanish comes from. Catalan. If you're not sure how to say it, just stand there as much as you can and keep going, okay? Remember, when we're practicing reading smooth, you don't have to, you don't want to spend too long on every word. Just sound it out as best you can and then continue. Uh, this says Galician. India. Government, Hindi is the language of India. Official, they're official languages. Um, national. Okay, I think I've covered most of the, uh, the tricky words. Oh, here's some down here. Hindi, Bengali, Telugu, Marathi, and Tamil. You don't have to read all these words exactly correctly because they're strange words that you've never heard before. They're language words and country words. Just sound them out the best you can, okay? That's all I'm looking for on here. Read it and just when you come to those tricky words, sound them out the best you can and then you can continue. Um, but it'll be good for you to try some of these tricky, tricky words and, uh, and then try practice answering the questions about it. On the questions. How many different languages are spoken in India? What information does the text provide to show that India has many diverse? I want to talk about this word diverse. Diverse means different. So if you, in our class, we have some people that are tall and some that are short, some with brown eyes and some with blue eyes, some with dark hair, some with blonde hair. That's diversity. Diversity is differences. And it's good that we have differences because we can... Um, learn from each other that way. And we can all get along as friends, even though we are different. And so what is this? In India, there are many different diverse people. What is the story? What things from the story show that that's true? Write the answer right here. What things from the short story show that India has is diverse? Um. And then the main idea, what is it mostly about? Remember, main idea, that's an important thing to know. you got to think of the whole story and write one sentence telling me what it's mostly about. The main idea is, it's mostly about, about one sentence telling me what the whole story is about, and that's your main idea. Um, okay. Pause the video now and go read that story, answer the question. Read it for one minute, see how far you can get, then finish reading it and answer the questions. Then 
uh, read for at least 30 minutes, which can include the time you spent on that story. Okay, pause the video now and get your reading done. Okay, you should be back from uh, you should be back from doing your reading. It's time for PE. Want to make sure you get some exercise. So pause the video now. Go get exercise for ten minutes, and then come back. I'll tell you the the rest of it. Okay, you should be back from doing PE. Um, community building is the next thing on our list. Go on to Padlet, and on Padlet, tell us who you wrote your letter to. Was it your grandma, your mom or dad, whoever you wrote your letter to, just tell us on Padlet. Okay, go do that now. All right, you should be back from going to Padlet to tell us who you wrote your letter to. And the last thing is lift time. For lift time, I really want you to learn to say hello in a few other languages. So you should know hello. I hope you know hello because that's our language. Uh, how about hola in Spanish and some other languages related to Spanish? How about yo que? Do you remember that from the beginning of the video? It's the Marshall Islands way to say hello. Yo que. Okay, now go on to the, our, uh, the website where you got to this video from, and I have a video on there of how to say hello in other languages. So go on there, learn how to say hello in some more. See if you can get to five or maybe ten different languages that you know how to say hello in. So it's a world hello day. See if you can learn how to say hello in some other languages, okay? All right. And that's your lift time. And, of course, the last two things on the list, have a fun day and be kind today. Um, remember, learning is fun, and the most important thing you can do is be kind to other people. So... Go enjoy yourself and learn how to say hello in some other languages. You guys have a great day. I'm proud of you and just keep on going with that schoolwork, okay? And keep on reading. I haven't paused it yet because I'm trying to find the pause button and my mouse is not working. Can you believe that? All right, I got it. <laughs> See ya.